look, let's be real. The reason that most of us picked up this book is because we want to be American royalty. Or I guess in my case, Canadian royalty. Hello my friends, my name is AJ and welcome or welcome back to my book nook. Today we are going to be talking about the book American Royals by Catherine McGee. So American Royals is a book that has been out for a while and I actually have been wanting to read it for a while just because it was such an interesting concept to me. The idea of what if George Washington had agreed to become king as opposed to an elected position. And I was really excited to get into that. I was hoping that this book was maybe going to talk about how maybe the monarchy was different in America versus the places that do have monarchies in the real world. And it didn't really dive into it that much, but it was still a pretty good book. So American Royals focuses on the Royal Washington family and the romance that is surrounding them. There are four main perspectives. The oldest daughter, Beatrice, who is in line to be the first queen of America. The second born daughter, Samantha, who is just sort of the spare, not in line for the throne, no one really cares what she does. Nina Gonzalez, who is Samantha's childhood commoner friend, who also is in love with Samantha's twin brother, Jefferson, and Daphne Dayton, the daughter of an American noble who is very determined to get a crown for herself. As I mentioned, this book is primarily a romance. As I said, I do wish that this book had dove into the idea of specifically American royals just a little bit more. You know that sound from TikTok that's from Dance Moms where she's saying, Paige, you were good. I'm waiting for you to be great. That was my experience with this book. It was good. I enjoyed it, but I honestly think that it could have been better. First, I want to talk a little bit about each of the individual narrators that we have. So we're going to start with Beatrice. I really, really like Beatrice. Beatrice kind of represents the typical royal who wishes they were a commoner because then their life wouldn't be fully figured out. And obviously that is a very typical common storyline that you see in these sort of royal romance stories. But the thing that adds to Beatrice's is that not only is she next in line for the throne, she's also going to be the first ever woman to secede the throne. And I think that that added a bit of complexity to the pressure that is on her that I thought was a very nice touch. I also really like that we got to see Beatrice become more comfortable with showing her emotions and being herself as the book progressed. We really got to see her continue to grow and become more comfortable as a person, not just as a monarch. And I really love seeing that growth for her. Then we have her sister, Samantha, and Samantha is I love Samantha. Samantha is my favorite character in this book. She wishes that people would pay attention to her. She has the opposite problem that Beatrice does. Well, Beatrice has everyone figuring out her life for her. Samantha feels that no one pays attention to her. Nobody cares about what she does. And it caused her to be a bit rebellious in her younger years. And even now, it she doesn't really seem to care about the royal life because no one cares about her. What I really love about Samantha is that she is very complex. She's likable, but she does have a note of self-absorption where she she's a good person, she has good intentions, but she can just be a little bit ignorant and clueless sometimes. For example, there's a moment where Nina is having a really bad experience and Samantha goes to talk to her, but it ends up talking about the bad thing that happened to her and not really sympathizing with her friend as much. And I really like to see that complexity of Sam. She's not just, you know, the bad girl. She's not just the, you know, rebellious princess, but she's also not just basically a commoner. She does still have the privileges of being royal and she doesn't really acknowledge that she has those until later on. So I liked seeing that as well. Nina is another good character. She is a commoner who is in love with the Prince Jefferson. And I really like that kind of trope of like the Prince and the commoner. Um, the main thing with Nina is I felt like we didn't get to develop her as a character, as an individual. We really got to see her in relation to her friendship with Sam and her relationship with Jefferson, but we don't really get to see much of Nina as 
herself. And I would have liked to see more of her because I do think she's an interesting character. She definitely has quite a few self-esteem issues which continue throughout the entire book. And I really wish that we could have gotten to see her become a little bit more confident in herself. But I do acknowledge that she does have a very hard time with the press because of her relationship with the royals. And so I can understand why she doesn't. <laughs> Having said that as well, I think that Nina provides an excellent example of just how tough the press would be on this sort of commoner and royal relationship. And we typically don't really see that sort of relationship except for in fantasy and, you know, old period pieces. You don't see it in modern day. And I think that it handled how the press and paparazzi would react to that very well. And our fourth and final narrator is Daphne Dayton. <sighs> Daphne is definitely the antagonist. She used to date Jefferson and she wants to ruin his relationship with Nina so that she can get back with him. But the thing is, is that Daphne is very much a social climber. She wants to be a princess. She cares about Jefferson a bit, but she cares more so about the fact that if she's with him, she'll be loved by everyone in the country. She's very manipulative. She knows how to play the press. She's incredibly self-absorbed and I hate her. The problem I have with Daphne is that if you are going to give us the perspective of the villain, which I'm okay with. I love having the antagonist perspective. I love it. It's great. But if you're going to do so, you have to make them somewhat sympathetic. That's the big problem with Daphne. She is not. Daphne ruins Nina's life and she shows no remorse for it. She actually states in the book that she doesn't feel bad at all and that it's just, you know, it had to be done. There's another thing that she does later on in the book that we find out about that is absolutely horrendous that she has done to someone who is her so-called friend. And she does these things that I would see as unforgivable even if she had had a little bit of redemption. There was an attempt at making Daphne sympathetic. There was a comment about how, you know, her mother was a bit of a social climber as well and really pushed Daphne to, you know, get in there and do the same. But we barely see Daphne's mother. We see her maybe three times in the book. And so saying that Daphne's mother is the one controlling her and pulling the strings behind the scenes doesn't work because we don't see that happening. And not only that, but Daphne comes up with most of her plans on her own. She takes pride in the fact that she's able to come up with these plans on her own. In fact, some of these things, including the thing that she did at the end of the book, which I think is the worst thing that she's done, her mother didn't even know about. That was just something that she did herself. Now, Daphne was well-written in the sense that she's a villain that just makes you upset. I would compare it sort of to Umbridge. You know, she's a villain who is someone that we can probably as readers relate to. But the problem with having a character like that is that if you don't give them some sort of sympathetic reason for why they're acting the way they are, if you don't have them show any remorse, it's not gonna make forgiving them very easy. And then if you're trying to get me to root for her and root for her to find romance with this other guy who's not Jefferson, who she regularly tells she's not interested in because he's not a prince and she needs to go after Jefferson, I'm not gonna be rooting for her. She's a terrible person. Now, as I mentioned about sort of the depth of Nina and Daphne's character, which I think could have improved the novel, let's talk a little bit about the romance and the governmental system. What a romantic thing, the government. <laughs> so the romance in this book, primarily between the three couples, yes, three, I'm not including Daphne in that, between Beatrice and her bodyguard, Connor, between Samantha and Beatrice's future husband, Teddy, and between Jefferson and Nina, the romance trope for all three of them is sort of that forbidden romance. And I wish that there had been some variety. When you have a book that has multiple different romances going on, what it means is that you have the opportunity that few romance books with only one couple have the opportunity to do, and that is explore multiple different romantic tropes. I think it would have been interesting, you know, maybe with Beatrice and Connor, you have that forbidden love. Maybe with Teddy and Sam, you have that enemies to lovers. She starts not really liking him, but having to hang out with him because 
you know, he's courting her sister and they slowly fall for each other. Maybe with Jefferson and Nina, we could have had that friends to lover. I would have liked to see all three of the relationships develop rather than just sort of be set up as we're going into the novel. With the governmental system, I mentioned that I would have liked to see more of how it worked as an American monarchy as opposed to, you know, the monarchies that exist in the real world. And I didn't feel like we got that. Um, going into this book, I was really intrigued by the idea of like, oh, okay, well, like, I wonder what would happen, what would be different? And I didn't feel that there was really anything that stood out as specifically American royals. I think this book could easily be rebranded as modern royals and be set in England and it wouldn't make any sort of difference. There is a great quote um, from Beatrice and her dad talking about, you know, addressing the bad things in the past and not erasing them but addressing them and moving forward. I thought that that was a very nice touch but I just feel like that is not enough. I would have liked to see more diving into the politics side of it and diving into how it's different rather than oh this is just a monarchy but it happens to be in America. So what are my final thoughts? Overall I do think American Royals is a good book. I do think it's a good romance but it's not that deep. I wish we could have just gotten more detail. I want to learn more about Nina. I want to learn more about why I should feel bad for Daphne. I want to learn more about the governmental system of American royalty and I would like to see some variety in the types of romance stories that we have. I do love Beatrice and Sam. I think they provide a perfect foil for each other and I really love watching the two of them sort of grow in their sisterly bond and also deal with both sides of the pressure of being royalty. But overall, I do think that the romances could have used a little bit more depth and as I said, American Royals, you're good. I'm waiting for you to be great. But that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when my next video comes out, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified. And let me know in the comments below, have you read American Royals? And do you have the same feelings as I do? Or did you really love it? Do you hate Daphne as much as I do? Or do you think that she could be redeemed? Let me know. I would love to have a conversation with all of you, but that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed and I will see all of you lovely people in the next video. Bye!